Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 15 is almost here and will release to the public on Monday, September 20th, 2021. And before you do that for peace of mind, I have some recommendations just to get ready for that update. Now, the first thing is the supported devices. So if you have an iPhone SE, the first generation iPhone 6s, 6s plus or newer, you'll have a supported device. Any device that supports iOS 14 also supports iOS 15. When it comes to the iPod touch, the seventh generation iPod touch is also supported. If you have iOS 14, again, you can update to iOS 15. The same is true on iPad. If you have iPad OS 14, you'll be able to update to iPad OS 15. So if you have an iPad air two, like I have here, also an iPad mini four or iPad fifth generation, you'll also have the option to update as well. So all of those devices are supported and will get many of the features in iOS 15. Now there are some features that will not be coming to iOS 15 on some older devices. And I have a separate video all about that. If you want to know what's excluded, but basically anything with an a 12 bionic processor and newer gets all the features processors that are older than that do not get all the features. So it just depends on your device. Now, the first thing I recommend you typically do is to do a backup. Now you can do this a couple different ways. One way is to connect through your computer. So whether you're using iTunes on windows or you're using a Mac through finder, connect your phone via lightning and then create a backup. Just go into the application and you'll be able to back up. It's pretty simple. Now, if you want to do that over iCloud, it's even easier. And if you want to do that, you can go into your settings under settings, tap on your name at the top. Once you're in your iCloud settings, scroll down until you see iCloud backup. Now, if you have all of these different things turned on, these are already going to be backed up. So whether or not you have messages on or off contacts, all of those are being backed up already, but for a backup that consists of all of your settings and everything else, go to iCloud backup, make sure it's turned on and then tap on backup. Now you can see your last successful backup. And it says for me, it's 7:30:21, So I definitely need to do a backup on this device before I update it. So that will back up everything on your device so that you have all of your settings and everything else. Should you have a problem? Now it's very rare to have a problem when you're updating to a major iOS update version, but it's not unheard of either. So I highly recommend a backup or at least have a bunch of these things checked so that it's backing up all of your mail accounts and photos. And if you don't have the storage here, you can always use iTunes to back that up as well. So you'll have that option. Now there's another thing. If you're having problems on iOS 14, 14.7.1 or 14.8, like I have on this device, or even if you're running iOS 15 betas, I would recommend resetting all settings if you're having problems and I don't mean to erase the device, but I mean, reset the settings in general, and you can do that under the main page of settings. So we'll go back and under your main settings, what you want to do is go to general, scroll down to reset. Now we don't want to wipe the phone, but we just simply want to reset all settings. What this will do is remove all of the settings from the device, everything from your Wi-Fi password to any other settings that are set up. Maybe you turned off a background app refresh or something else that will wipe all of those settings. And it really seems to help a lot of issues, everything from network to Bluetooth to to Wi-Fi issues. All of those things seem to be resolved after I reset that not 100% of the time, but for many people that have done that, I recommend it if you're having major problems, otherwise I would leave it alone. Now you'll also want to make sure you have enough storage available, especially on older devices as the updates tend to be between five and eight gigabytes in size. Now, typically they'll install and then overwrite the old operating system and not take up additional space compared to what it had before. But I highly recommend that you make sure you have enough storage available, especially on older devices, such as the iPhone SE, where you may have had a lower storage option. Now, if you are having those issues, you can always install the update using iTunes to sort of get around those storage issues, but you can make sure you have enough storage available by going into settings again, going to general and under general, go to iPhone storage. Under iPhone storage, this will show you everything here. And it even gives you recommendations on how to save some storage. So you'll see here, it says save 37.47 gigabytes, automatically upload and safely store all of your photos and videos in iCloud. Now, of course you need to make sure you have enough iCloud storage. If you do that 
Also, it can get rid of recently deleted in your photos. And then there's more. So you can see what's taking up the most space. So for me in podcasts, I could go in here, I could delete the app in general, or just go back and delete some of my old podcasts by swiping and then deleting. That will free up a lot of storage since I don't need to listen to all of the episodes. I just want the recent ones. So these are taking up a lot of space and you can tap on edit and then just delete them the same way. So it's the same sort of walkthrough. It's a little bit easier to just to swipe them off the screen, but I think you get the idea. So as long as you have enough storage available, you'll be able to install this. And the other thing you'll need to install this is enough battery life. Apple requires that you have at least 50% of your battery life available when it starts to install. So it will download the update after the updates downloaded, it will prepare the update and then it will begin to install it or ask you to install it. If it doesn't have 50% battery life here, you'll need to plug in your phone or make sure that you're charged above that before you begin. That's just something that you'll need in order to be able to do that. Now, once the update is released to the public, I'll have a separate video on that with all of the details in it, but you'll want to go to your settings if you're not seeing it and then go to general and then software update here. It will check for an update. If you're not seeing that update, typically that means you have automatic updates turned on. So tap on automatic updates, turn it off and check again. And then hopefully you'll see that update. It releases at the same time everywhere around the world. So if people are saying that it's out, they're showing screenshots that it's out, it's out for everyone. So it should be available then. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is if you're on the beta test program, whether you're a public beta tester or a developer, typically when the final version is out, it will usually be the same as the release candidate or the golden master that they used to call it before or GM. So the RC or release candidate will typically be the exact same version with the same build number. And you'll just want to remove your beta profile. If that's the case, remove the profile, check for an update. If there's no update, you already have it. So just keep that in mind. If you are on the beta program and you want to get out of it, you don't want additional betas when they start to update iOS 15 to future versions, such as iOS 15.1 and newer, then I would remove that beta profile. Now, if you're on iOS 14, it's in one spot in iOS 15, it's in a different spot if you have that beta profile. So let me show you that quickly on iOS 15. So we'll unlock my phone here. We'll go to settings. And under settings on iOS 15, you'll go to general, then you'll go down to VPN and device management. And under that, you'll see the profile tap on the profile and then remove the profile, reboot your phone, check for an update. And if there's an update, you're not on the latest version, you'll need to update. If there is no update, you have the latest version and Apple decided to use the release candidate as the final version as they often do. So hopefully that's helpful and helps you get prepared for iOS 15. There are a ton of changes. Like I said, I'll have a separate video about that. There's 300 to 400 changes overall. Some are larger, some are smaller, but there's quite a bit. And some of it's very helpful for those that work from home and more. If you have any other suggestions or questions, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.